Hello, my siblings in Christ. As most of you probably know, the 45th Patriarch of the Serbian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Irenaeus, died due to COVID-19. I was asked a long time ago to make a video on the election process in the Serbian Church, considering that there are a number of videos out there that detail the election process for the Roman Pope. This is a good time to describe what happens next in the Serbian Church. Once a Serbian Patriarch dies, the Holy Assembly of Bishops convenes, with two-thirds of bishops required to be present, with the eldest metropolitan among them presiding. The eldership here is counted not by the age of the metropolitan, but from the time of his episcopal consecration. In the absence of metropolitans, the eldest bishop presides. The bishops meet in a special hall that is connected to the Patriarchal Chapel of St. Simeon the Murgasher. Before every voting round, the bishops conduct a service called the Invocation of the Holy Spirit, that he may guide them to make the right choice. The bishops cast their ballots, and the bishop who wins the majority vote becomes the first candidate. In the case there is no majority, the process is repeated until the majority candidate is elected. The same entire process is repeated again twice until there are three candidates in total. Candidates need to be bishops active within their dioceses for the past five years. Retired bishops and auxiliary bishops cannot be elected. In the case a bishop cannot attend the electoral council, he can designate a deputy among the bishops to cast his ballot. Clearly, there has to be a very high degree of trust between these two bishops, because it is sorely lacking between them in general. Once the three candidates have been selected, their names are placed in three sealed envelopes. These envelopes are then placed in the Book of Gospels, which is placed upon the holy table in the chapel of St. Simeon the Murgasher. The presiding metropolitan chooses and invites one of the monks of good repute to attend the council, after an additional invocation of the Holy Spirit that the election is in accordance with the will of God, the monk enters the altar and chooses one of the envelopes from the Book of Gospels. He gives the envelope to the presiding bishop, who reads aloud the name of the patriarch-elect, in this case, the 46th Patriarch of the Serbian Orthodox Church. He then immediately adjourns the session of the assembly. This manner of election is pure synergy between God and man. Us people choose and bring three candidates before the Lord, and we let him choose one of the three, incarnational theology at its finest. The very next day, the newly elected patriarch serves the divine liturgy in the cathedral of St. Michael in Belgrade, during which he is officially seated at the throne of St. Sabas, the first archbishop of Serbia. After the liturgy, he assumes all the rights and duties of a Serbian Patriarch. The Patriarch is seated at the throne of St. Sabas once again in the Patriarchate of Pech, which is the traditional seat of the Serbian Patriarchs. However, due to international meddling and big euphemism impending warning issues Serbia has with its province of Kosovo, this part of the election is generally postponed to a later date, without time restrictions. I hope you found this video useful. Please keep the Serbian Orthodox Church in your prayers during this tiring time that the new Patriarch is elected according to the will of God. Every prayer counts, and please pray for the repose of our beloved Patriarch. May God bless you all. Bye!